All right, guys, so we have the uh, 2017 version of the STAR test today. Uh, I'm going to be going through all the questions. We'll probably do five at a time here. So let's dive right into it here. And I'll kind of go through each one of these kind of slow and in depth. You know, you might have seen other videos online that kind of go through them quick. So I'm going to try to explain each one uh, pretty well. So. Um, you know, you can read the uh, directions there. So first question here, which expression is equivalent to 140, uh, square root of 147? So what we're going to do is uh, simplify this radical down. So we need two things that multiply to 147 here. This is how I teach how to simplify radicals there. So and I believe that'll be divisible by 3. Yep, that'll be 3 and 49. And then the 49 breaks down to 7 and 7. And with square roots, we're looking for perfect squares. So we're looking for things that are in groups of 2. So there, you have a group of 7s right there. So we're going to pull that outside the radical. And then the other things that don't have anything inside the radical, it's the leftover part. So that 3 stays inside of the radical. So then it will be 7 square root of 3, which is answer B right there. So anything that's left over that doesn't have a pair, you, you keep inside the radical, you multiply those together. If there's multiple things, multiply them together. If you had like multiple groups of other things here, like maybe we had a group of twos out here eventually, uh, you would do seven times two on the outside of the radical. But in this case, we didn't have that. So that one's pretty straightforward. There's not a ton to that. So we'll move along here. Uh, the next one here, a drummer and a guitarist each wrote songs for their band. The guitarist wrote eight fewer songs and twice the number of songs that the drummer wrote. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to highlight that first situation here. Eight fewer songs. The guitarist wrote eight fewer songs and twice the number of songs the drummer wrote. All right, and then there's another situation here. Together, they wrote a total of 46 songs. So actually, I'm going to deal with that blue part first. The total of 46 songs. You have two different variables. They say D is the songs that the uh, drummer wrote, and then G is the songs that the guitarist wrote right there. So together, when you add those two things up, or D plus G right there, together they wrote 46 things, 46 songs right there. This right here, the 46, that's a total. And usually when I see a total, usually that means you're going to be adding a bunch of things. So it's going to be some type of sum. So that's a sum right there. So D plus G, that's a sum. That's adding two things. So that equals 46 right there. Now the other part is a little bit more tricky. So I'll write that here in red to kind of color code it. The guitarist wrote eight fewer songs than the uh, twice the number of the songs that the drummer wrote. So twice the number of songs that the drummer wrote right there, we're going to write 2D for that. Now, when it says eight fewer than twice the number of songs that he did, we're actually subtracting eight. And a lot of people want to write it like this, eight minus 2D, but that number you're actually subtracting is eight. So you're going to subtract eight from 2D. So it, uh, it, it reads backwards, essentially. So you want to kind of be careful on that right there. So it's 2D minus eight, and that's equal to the number of the guitar songs right there that the guitarist did. So I guess F is going to be the best option for that. Uh, the D and G are switched around on the answer choice, but that's okay because you can, you know, 1 plus 2 is the same thing as 2 plus 1, right? So order doesn't matter on what you add things. So they actually didn't ask us to solve that, so we're going to leave that as it is right there. Um, now, if you did, if they did go and ask you to solve, you can solve by what we call substitution. Or elimination, but that's only if you if they ask you for that. Or you can even use a graph and see where they intersect. All right, but that's kind of an extension, so don't worry about that. We'll probably see one of those eventually here. So now moving on here, number three, uh, which graph best represents the solution set of y is less than or equal to negative four x? All right, so typically with our graphs with two variables, we like to think of graphs as y equals mx plus b. So in this case here, here's our mx right there. That means m, or the slope, is negative 4. That's also like saying the slope is negative 4 over 1. That would be the same thing. Now, as far as the b, we don't really have 
a B value. So we like to say here, in this case, the B is actually zero. Now the B is where you start at. So we're gonna start at zero. Make sure you start on the Y axis. Okay, now in this case here, if we're starting at zero on the Y axis, we can already eliminate option A and option D right there. And we'll talk about why they might have put those answers here in just a second. Uh, but we got to start at zero. And then the slope right here of negative four over one, remember slope is always rise over run. So that means we're going to go down four with the negative four and then to the right one. All right, so C and B both have that. The only difference is the shading and then if it's a dotted or solid line. So let's talk about that right there. So since we have the less than or equal to, less than or equal to means a solid line. Right there. If you had regular greater than or less than right there, this would be a dashed line. Okay, which in this case we don't have. So we got that solid line going on there. So we have a solid line, and then shade, uh, it says less than, so that means shade down right there. All right, so C is our best option right there. Some of you guys might have saw that right away. Um, now, if it was greater than, that means you're going to shade upward. But right there, that's a less than or equal to, so shade downward and then do a solid line. Now, as far as A and D, why might someone pick A and D as their graphs? Some people think... Y is less than or equal to negative 4X is kind of like Y equals 4, which is a horizontal line through negative 4, I guess. Or actually, I need to put a negative there. So some people might have thought the negative 4 right there, that was a horizontal line, and then the shading is a little bit different there. But it's 4X. 4X, that's the slope, so you got to be kind of careful on that. So sometimes they're going to put answer choices that kind of look like they could be the right answer. Um, so just kind of be careful there on that. All right, next one here. These are a little tricky here, but if we have a graphing calculator, which most of you guys are going to have that on your star test, we can use our graphing calculator to help ourselves answer this question. So we have the graph of x squared was transformed to create the graph of gx equals x minus 5 and then squared right there. Uh, and what I'll probably do here, um, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll probably link... Uh, a little cheat sheet as far as the function notation, like what that tells us to do as far as up, down, left, or right, or if you have like something that uh, does a vertical stretch or vertical compression, stuff like that. So I'll make it a little cheat sheet. So me just knowing the rules, I know that minus five, minus 7.5 inside the parentheses is right 7.5. Uh, it's a horizontal shift right there. So uh, that's just from me studying the rules. There's a bunch of different rules. Once again, I'll link that in the description um, or include that in the Google Drive folder if you're watching this on Google Drive. But let's talk about the graph and compare it uh, with the graphing calculator. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to try and switch. Okay, this window is not going to come down, so I'm going to drag that down. And then we're going to type this into our graphing calculator. So I'm going to go here to y equals, to graph anything, we put it in y equals. Uh, now it says fx equals x squared, that's the same thing as y. So we're going to say y equals, and then we're going to do x, and then squared. We'll graph that here in a second. I'm going to hit down, and then I'm going to compare that to the other graph, and I'm going to type it in the exact way it looked. It was fx equals, and then parentheses, x minus the 7.5, and then close parentheses, and then squared. And then hopefully we can kind of see these together. So there's that first graph. There's your x squared graph. And there's the one that was x minus 7.5 squared. So if you look here, if you look at the vertex, which is always a key point to look at, the vertex is shifted over to the right for, or I'm sorry, 7.5 units right there. So that would be, whoops, your answer on that. So I'm going to drag this back up if it will let me. There we go. So yeah, there you go. So we will say horizontal shift, right 7.5 units there. So I'll be F right there. Okay, once again, I'll have the rules in a second where you can go and hey, grab those if you want to study those. Um, next one here, a set of weights includes a four-pound barbell and six pairs of uh, weight plates. Each pair of 
uh, plates weighs 20 pounds. If the pair of plates are added to the barbell, the total weight of the barbell and the plates uh, in pounds can be represented by this function here, fx equals 20x plus 4. So as far as the connection of all the numbers, you start out with the 4-pound barbell, and then it's 20 each additional set of wet, uh, weight plates that you put on there. So they're asking here, what is the range of of the situation. So the range is kind of like your y values. Now another thing they could ask you is the domain. So we need to know domain are your x values or another word for it would be input your input values and then the range are the y's which is like your output values. So it's like the results of whenever you plug in a number, it's the results there. Okay, so we need to think about here, with the context of the situation, we only have six different pairs, right? So when we plug in, like for example, if we plug in zero, like if we say our x value, our first x value is zero, like if I put on zero weight plates right there, we can think of 20 times zero, plus 4. And if you simplify, that's 20 times 0, which is 0, and then 0 plus 4 is 4. So that'd be like your weight right there. So the first option, the first number should be 4. All right? Now we can't plug in, like for example, we can't plug in 0.5 or half or anything like that because you can't do half a pair. I mean, I guess you could do half a pair, but you can't do like a, you couldn't do like a quarter of a pair. So we're going to go and increase these by increments of 1. So if we go and do 20 times 1 instead here, so for one pair, that's going to be 20 plus 4, essentially, so that'll be 24. All right, and then you can kind of keep going and doing the same thing for each of these, all the way up to 6, eventually. Okay, so for 2, we get, what is that, 40, so that'd be 44. For 3, if you want to write out the work, most of you guys are going to start to kind of see the pattern, so, you know... You wouldn't necessarily need to write that. That'd be 60 plus 4, so that'd be 64. 5 would actually, once you punch it out, it'd be 84. And then I guess 6 would be 104 right there. Okay. And then, wait, did I miss one? Oh, I missed 4. That's why I was like, what the heck happened there? So that's 4, 5, and then I guess you'd have 124 at the end. Okay, so obviously B are all the set the set of Y values right there. Be careful, A is actually, they put that there because those are the domain values. So be careful, that's why A is not an answer. Um, I'm not sure why someone would choose C, maybe because you think you can only do like 0, 2, 4, and 6. In any way, it's an X value, it doesn't even matter. Um, and then I think these D are all the Y values that correspond right there. So B is going to be your best option on this one. So, and that is it for the first set of five.